Hi guys, I'm Peter and today I'm doing the second part of the tessellated snow material tutorial. So, uh, in the last part we made it so that the snow appears only on the top of our material. And today we will go into the actual tessellation. So, uh, here is the material. Uh, please visit the previous tutorial part if you don't have it this way. And let's start off with creating a tessellation which will uh, tessellate the object using our snow map. And this is not the way how we will be doing it later on, but I want to show you uh, why it is not a good way. Because I was thinking that this would be the right way to do the tessellation. And I'll show you why I was being wrong. So first let's take some multiply node. And let's take our uh, snow map, this iteration of it. So if we preview it, let's wait. Yes, so this is it. So it's if you don't remember, it it applies the snow using some much mathematical expressions, uh, taking the most white pixels of our uh, base texture. So if you have different texture, you will have different um, snow map basically. So we are calling it a snow map, but of course it's not uh, technically it's not any kind of special map. Basically, it's just a calculated uh, texture. So we stop previewing this and. We take this multiply and let's multiply it some by something like ten uh, for a beginning. Yeah. We plug it here. And then two things we have to do. First we have to enable the tessellation for the material. So here in the material uh, properties you say okay, flat tessellation. And now it will recompile shaders. This for me. And what I want to do is I want to create some kind of constant. Uh, so let's create a scalar parameter here. Let's call it uh, tessellation passes basically. And this value uh, regulates how much uh, extra geometry we get from a tessellation, so how much extra polygons. And I'm using something like 0 0.5. And you can modify it for different meshes, of course. And you plug it, um, let's go here. You plug it into the tessellation multiplier. And it won't have any effect yet. What will have effect is when we plug this, which is our snow texture multiplied by 10, to the world displacement. So let's give it time. And more time. Okay, here we go. So, two things you will notice. It looks kind of uh, awful. <laughs> and it's, of course, it's, it's nowhere near of being realistic. And it's only tessellating to one direction. Well, why is it happening? Is because uh, it has just one basic vector for tessellation now. It points in one direction, which is, um, let me see, which is x, y, and z uh, in the middle, basically, somewhere between these three. So we need to tell it that it wants to tessellate in the direction of a vertex on which it's working. And we can take vertex normal in world space for every vertex of this mesh. And for each pixel we just multiply our tessellation data to this vertex normal in world space. So we take this node and plug it to the world displacement. And let's give it more time. Sorry, I have a slow GPU. Apparently, it's a GPU problem, so it takes kind of an awful lot of time. When it's compiling, I want to tell you this. You can see that there is a lot of noise, and we don't want to have it as a tessellation uh, mask or displacement map for tessellation, of course. So there are several ways of how you can improve this situation. First, of course, you can smoothen this. Uh, Smooth on this texture which we made with the different uh, nodes in the material editor. And this is more advanced way. And I will show you a more simple way. So now the shader is compiled, and you can see that now the tessellation is pointing to every single direction how it should be from the uh, vertex, so from the surface. And this is just fine. So this value 10 basically is responsible uh, of how 
how much this um, uh, tessellation is pulling the surface out. So if you put here more, it will be pulling more. So we want to make it a scalar parameter. And let's call it uh, tessellation nation height, for example. And the normal tessellation height is the same as 10. Okay. Yeah, it will be compiling. But for now, I will show you the more simple way to get the pro more or less nice looking tessellation map. Uh, if you have a sample assets in your project, you can just go to textures and you can, of course, take your own map for the displacement tessellation map. I don't recommend using something like Perlin noise because it's, it's really it's noisy. So it's not what we want. We want something more or less smooth with a, with a smooth transitions from uh, white to black basically and the smoke is more or less what we need so we click here we go here we click on this uh, editing space we hold T we click left click and we get this uh, texture straight from the content browser okay so now if we plug it here we want to multiply it basically or we have this multiplier so let's give it a little time And more time, apparently. Or, or maybe it should be. It, it, it should be like this with this map. So one thing we have to change is that uh, we want to tile it a little bit. It should be bigger. So let's bring this texture coordinates node. And put here something like 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Okay. Okay, now it's compiling 200 traders. Perfect. Okay. Well, before it finishes, you can see already that it starts to deform the mesh geometry in more smooth way. So, of course, if you recall the topic of previous tutorial, we were what we were doing is that we were taking the only upward facing vertices and applying the snow only on them. So, that's what we want for our uh, tessellation to do also. So, for the upper part of the mesh, there will be tessellation because the snow is there. And we want to achieve this simply by taking these nodes. And before we multiply it by tessellation height, which is our scalar parameter, we want to multiply it by this expression that we made in the previous tutorial. And let's see what we get from here. Oh yeah, I forgot to put it here, sorry. Okay, so uh, let's let it finish and I don't want to see more compilations of shaders so I will just make a material instance and show you the result that we have from now. Okay, so we go somewhere like materials or experimental materials is the folder I'm using and I just create a new let's see material instance. Yeah. I call it any way I want. And when I click it I get the material instance editor and I just have to select my parent, which is Snow Gen 1 in this particular case. Okay, and we have some parameters here now to work with. 
and we can already see in the top on the top that some geometry is being bent in some way. Okay, uh, let's play with parameters. Uh, first of all, we can improve the amount of snow we have here. And let's see tessellation height. Okay, that's that's the way it works. So now you can see that tessellation is absolutely independent from the snow amount. And if you put here something like zero, you get no snow, but the mesh is tessellated. And this is not really good actually, because what's the point of tessellation is that the snow is being placed on the top of the mesh, and that's the reason why uh, the, ge the geometry of the mesh is being modified, let's say, okay? So we have the tessellation working now, and we can see that it works on the top uh, of the mesh. And if you play with these values, you can get pretty good results of what, for what you want with the snow tessellated. And please be sure to remember that with the different geometry, it works differently. So for example, with this cube, which is a simple geometry, it doesn't work really nice. You can see some cracks here and there. And let me just take you take some other... Um, okay, let's give the editor time to load. Uh, let's take some other shape, or even a prop. Somewhere here I had a rock, okay. Or even on this level there was a rock. Never mind. So if I select this rock, I get into this uh, material instance editor, and I click here, I get this rock as a preview mesh. Now I can play with it, of course, and now you can see that if I change the tessellation height, now um, no, zero gives you just uh, normal geometry, so this is a simple mesh. When you improve the tessellation height, it starts to grow, and if you are very careful with these values, you can make something that looks like a snow basically falling on it. Uh, in the next part of the tutorial, I will show you how to uh, control the amount of tessellation depending on a snow amount. So then, so that when there is no snow, there is no tessellation, and tessellation appears because of the snow. If you look look at it from the viewer side, but for now, this is it. I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.